of the basketball games. NCAA present tournament plans for 72 or 76 teams. The NCAA has presented a plan to the Divisions One Conference Commissioner that would expand the men's and women's basketball tournaments by four or eight teams alongside an option to leave each field at 68 teams. The proposal was outlined to the commissioner this week by the NCAA Senior Vice President of Basketball, Dave Gavitt, and NCAA Vice President for Women's Basketball, Lynn Hosman. Under the proposal, Especially the 68 team field include both four and eight team models. The NCAA will keep its 64 team bracket, but will add play in games involving the numbers 10 through 12 seed. You know, I like my March Madness the way it is, to be quite honest with you. I really don't want you to touch it. 68 teams gets in. You got your first four who has to play to get into the actual field, and we move on for there. Why is it we finna have seeds 10 through 12 be involved in this even more? Well, they already kind of involved in it, but you want your 16 seeds to fight for a spot. You want your bubble teams, for whatever reason, that's where your 11, 10 seeds come in at 12 seeds. They the they be bubble teams, but since they are in a big conference, they get a higher seed or they get a better seed than the team that won that conference for them mid May. Kind of interesting to me, but hey, look, this is what they want to do. They've been talking about it for quite some time, and they press hard to do it. It says here, if the men's tournament is passed, it is expected the women's tournament will also as well. ACC Commissioner James Phillips said Thursday during the uh, AP Sports Edition Summer Conference, it is appropriate to look at expansion, and we need to do that. We are looking at it, close quote. It need to be approved, but they are looking at it, and they are trying to explain. I don't know why they keep trying to explain. We don't need every team involved in a postseason run. This is not a participation type of postseason. You must earn your way into the postseason. And if you can't earn your way to the postseason, then you should not be involved in the postseason. Now, on the flip side of that, I could also flip it around and say, but if they do expand it, a team like Indiana State doesn't get dropped into the NIT when they should have been in the NCAA tournament. Despite the fact they had a hell of a run in the NIT, if it fell short to, I want to say, was it Seton Hall? I don't remember. I think it was Seton Hall. In the championship game of the NIT. Here's my thing. I can see it from both ways because I was I was on this program trying to say let Indiana State get in because they deserve to be in. These boys played. They won 30 games, but only but the fact that they didn't win their conference because they are part of a mid major conference, they can't get in, which is like stupid. Teams that actually do their job, win games, have to win a tournament because of what conference they in. Just to get into a tournament, which is kind of not fair when you got a team like Indiana State. On the flip side, like I just said earlier, every team knows her to be in the tournament. Do not make this a participation type of tournament. We don't need that. We want teams that earn it. Here's my thing. This is what the, this is what the NCAA need to do. If they want to change things up when it comes to March Madness, just do it like this. Okay, we already know. If you win your company, that's automatic. Bid. It's automatic. We get that. Okay? Secondly, I feel if you win a certain amount of games, if you have teams that can win 30 games, they should be in the tournament because they are handling business on their schedule. You have a 31 team in the tournament, they going to raise people. I was like, this team won 30 games. I want to see what this team is made about. You just don't win 30 games, okay? Especially when the big teams, they can't even get the 30 wins no more. So, like a team like Indiana State, who was like 30 or 3 in the season, should have been in the tournament. So, if you can win a magical number of games, you should be considered to be making the tournament. Okay. Then you got to look at scheduling, look at conference, which I don't know if you want to look at conference when it comes to basketball. Basketball is different than football. I get it. In football, you want to look at conference because. You pretty much got an idea of what you're going to deal with when it comes to conference play when you, from each conference when it comes to football. Basketball is a little different. 
Best of all, a little different. Like, remember, just like recently, we just had two one seeds getting knocked out by 16 seeds. Like, anything is possible in basketball. They do say anything is possible in football, like any game Sunday, but literally anything is possible in basketball because you can be there one day, yeah, your shot ain't on, and you finna get caught by a team from a mid-major. It literally happens every single year. That's why March Madness is like the most inciting postseason sport ever because you know you finna get some upset. You just don't know where it's coming from and who's going to get caught. So – there's a lot of things to take care of. I can see it from both sides. I can make argument for both sides. Personally, for me, I like my 68 teams the way it is. But at the same time, if it's beneficial to a team like an Indiana State that can win 30 games in the season and not have to worry about when they come for tournament just to get in, because that's the only way to get in, I'm with it. Because I wanted Indiana State in this past tournament. I really did. So I can see it both ways, but a lot of people ain't gonna see it that way because they like what they got right now. But I can see it both ways. All right, that's the big news from the college area. Let's 